Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today we are going to be doing a simple value study in oil. This is a great tutorial for beginners to learn how to use oil paints, the supplies that you need, how to mix it, how to apply it, and how to go about the process of making an oil painting. You need a black and a white oil paint. I'm using ivory black and titanium white. I would recommend having two brushes, two paint brushes, and these are just made out of hog, bristle, or um, Maybe this is synthetic, but some kind of stiff, stiffer brush that definitely can move the oil paint around. And then again, a round brush, a small round brush for details. And also this is what I use to like sketch it in with. So this is a number one and this is a number eight, but really those numbers don't mean too much in oil painting because they change with the brands, so. Then you need something to to clean off your brushes and also thin out the paint. So we're going to be using turpinoid today. You can always use linseed oil and liquin, and these are great as well. We might use some liquin. I just really like to use it, but we don't have time for linseed oil today, sorry. This is just a medium to kind of thin out the paint. And then you need a palette, something to mix your paints on. You can use disposable palette paper, which I'm using, or just a glass plate, piece of glass, piece of wood a rag to clean your brushes off on, and I definitely recommend having a palette knife to mix your colors with on your palette. And that's it. Uh, the only optional thing, I have, there's always more, right? Whenever I think I've done. I would recommend wearing gloves, and I just wear these, I have them in my drawer. I just like to wear these latex gloves when I'm painting to keep it off of my hands. Uh, but you, you don't have to if you're clean and you're not gonna get it all over yourself then. Totally optional. And the picture we're going to be using is on my website, and I will provide a link below, but it's basically these simple geometric shapes. I definitely recommend starting out painting with black and white um, and, and learning how these values look on objects and how to portray them in oil paint. Plus, it's just easy to use two colors rather than all of the colors that are available to begin with. So print this off or just look at it on your computer, or I will have it also in the screen side by side with what we're painting. And I think that's it, so let's get started. Make sure you have some windows open. The first thing you wanna do is grab your palette, whether that's a disposable sheet of palette paper, a plate, glass, a wood palette, just get it ready. And I like to just keep my disposable palettes just in the pad still, I don't like to take them out. And just add, you don't need very much paint, some white. You can always add more paint later but you're not gonna like scoop up paint and put it back in here. Not usually, at least. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put these on two different sides and kind of mix them in the middle. And if you're using some liquid, you could put it in here. I probably will use a little bit. I just really like this medium. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to use than, than um, turpentine when I'm working in this kind of situation. So it's a little thick but I am going to be using liquid. So just you can just glob a little bit. So how you wanna kinda of set this up is, have your oil paints either in your arm, um, you can set them down on your lap, I wouldn't do that. I like to keep them like up, you know, so I can reach them. Keep your um, turpentine in a jar or in one of these silicone oil things open and ready for you to use, rinsing your brushes out in. And the nice thing with oil is you don't need to work quickly, so it's, it's nice, it's very forgiving, very slow process. You wanna have your palette knife to do some mixing of these two, and then your brushes. So just keep all of these things close. Uh, and remember, start with less paint than you think you need because you can always add more, but you can't really put this back in the jar. One thing I like about my easel that I paint on is it has this nice area right here for me to keep things in. So. This is where I'll put my turpentine that I'm mixing with right here. I have like extra paints that I might need. And then when I need to set my brush down, I set it down. It is gigantic though, so that is one of the bad things about it. It's just huge. Okay, so I have this set up on my easel. I have my oil paints here. The nice thing is I can kind of lift my palette up to show you. Once I start adding some turpentine, this might get a little bit hard. Um, but the first thing we wanna do is sketch out these shapes onto our canvas. You can also, uh, if I'm doing a painting, I actually like to kind of prime the surface first, but since we're kind of doing a direct painting, a la prima, kind of really fast and just 
the composition, we're just going to paint on our white background, which is fine. It's great for a beginning. So I'm gonna actually use some of my turpentine because um, you'll see how thick this oil is. I mean, it is thick, kind of bumping off of my paper. And what I'm doing is I'm just dipping my small round brush into the oil and I'm thinning it out. So see how thin that is? It's almost like I'm making ink. And that's what you're going to do your, your sketch of the shapes in, is this really thin, like I wish you could see it. Oh, that's a little better. You can kind of see the paint next to it. Just kind of thin it out with some turpentine. You don't want it to be globby, just thin, loose paint. And this is, composition is tricky. Um, so what I like to do is kind of figure out where the middle of my composition is. If I'm looking at it or if it's a photo, just kind of make an X and figure out like, okay, so in the middle of it is about where the cone ends, the cylinder ends, and this rectangle, this cube. And then if we go this way, the middle of the painting, uh, the composition is just, it's a little off-centered of this. So then we can just kind of start with maybe this cube and also look at the directions of the lines. Geometric shapes, I said they're simple, but they actually might be a little bit more complicated. But just look at angles of lines. You know, this one's going up, this one's going up, this one should be straight, these ones should be straight. So we're basically looking at the angles of these. Not the up and down parts, but the sides. Okay, so let's just start. Okay, so we know that the center of this and a little over is where the top of the square starts or this, this shape, this elongated cube. So we're just going to indicate that. And then this is a little bit longer than that. So kind of compare parts to each other. So this part's maybe about half as big as that. And then the top, you just kind of, I like to look at like where does this edge and this point compare to this one? Like this one really hits the side about right in the middle. So just kind of put that point there and then we can draw this back in since I'm not using vanishing points. And then how far down does this go, you know? Um, probably, also this is a good composition trick. So you can compare the size of the top of this to the size of the whole thing. So like, the length of, the width of this, how does that compare to the whole height? It's like one and a half, so I can actually just do that to my painting. It's like one and a half, like right there. So I was making it a little, a little too tall. That's the nice thing with oil though, is we can cover that up. All right, now the ball starts less than halfway down, but we'll worry about the ball in a second. I think we need to get this cylinder in. And again, once your brush gets a little dry, I always dip it in turpentine first, dip it in your black, and then you can keep painting. And this part right here dips down about as far as that goes, so. And when you look at this width, it's about the same as that. So again, just comparing it to other things in the composition, and this this point of this cube right here, I'm just gonna use my paintbrush. It's about the width of this, boom, down. So about right here is where that cube, this second cube starts. And it doesn't go all the way over on the shape. We're kind of missing part of it too. And then you can kind of figure out where this point is. It comes in just a little bit from that. And now we do need to put this ball in. So to figure out the size of the ball, if you look at the width, it definitely looks a little bit wider than these things, but it's probably as wide. I know I'm doing this a lot. I didn't know I'd be proportioning so much, but we're not <laughs> sketching too much. So I'm just kind of showing you how I would go about this process. It's about as wide as that. And the tip, the top of the ball hits the shape a little bit further over than the center. So it's like the, the highest point. 
And these do not need to be perfect. Remember, this is a study. Oh, but here's a problem. So look at where the bottom of the ball is and then where the bottom of this cube is, is a lot different in our image. The camera may have been a little bit closer to that, but I think it's important um, to catch that. Um, so this ball might be too big also. So let's bring this up a little bit. And again, if I start losing that, I'm just gonna re-dip in this paint. So this is going to be a demonstration as if I was like in the room with you. So it's, this is a little bit longer than some of my other tutorials, um, but I, I think it's valuable for you. <laughs> okay, so it comes below, which might mean we probably need to drop this and we need to drop this down as well. And sometimes when I'm painting, in order for me to keep like the, the right lines that I want, sometimes I like thicken up the right ones. Just so it's a little bit easier for me to tell what, which ones I'm going to be using when I paint. So to see how I just kind of thicken those ones up. Okay, we can't see the top of this cone, but we can see that we have a cylinder or a cone on top of the cylinder. So let's figure out how tall that cylinder needs to be. I bet it's as tall as this because I have these shapes in a box, so I actually know that, but you can kind of compare them in the picture. And if you're looking at something in real life, that's why you see artists doing this. You can just look at it, keep your arms super straight so that it stays consistent and proportion. So if I'm trying to keep it, you know, about that tall, then I can just, you know, I know that it's gonna be about right there, the center of this. All right, so there we have it blocked in. So easy, I hope you're with me still. Um, one thing we also f neglected was to put in the table. So, and it, this is a little bit, like I don't like how the table lines up with the corner of this. So I'm gonna change it a little bit. Instead of putting the table coming right here, which it kind of does in the picture, I'm gonna just bring it maybe a tiny bit lower. Not too much because I don't want this floating or right at the top of it, but just kind of there. So you can kind of see I just dropped it down a little bit. That's the nice thing with painting is you can change what you want to change and keep what you want to keep. All right, let's lay in some of these colors. The first thing we want to do is just, I like to just block in the background. Um, you don't have to paint far to near, but I do like to do that. So to make gray, go ahead and grab your palette knife. This is one thing I'm not great at. I like to mix uh, with my paintbrush. <laughs> So I'm just gonna make a gray background. So I'm just gonna grab some of that Mars, or that ivory black, and I grabbed way too much. And probably need to take some of that away. This is gonna be a light gray, so. And then grab some of that white. Also, you, I should have cleaned this off because now I've got black and white, that's okay. And then just go ahead and mix it up on there until you get a good gray color, and I do have turpentine in this. So, one thing that's nice about mixing on a wood palette is I feel like, and glass, you can kind of change the color underneath with glass, which is nice. Okay, so I've got a gray in the middle. Go ahead and just mix it up with your palette knife, and that's so you save a ton of paint when you do this, but then make sure to clean off your palette knife just on your rag after. It's good when you're working in oils just to kind of keep things clean. All right. I'm going to be doing most of this painting, probably all of this painting with my flat brush. So grab your flat brush and this is where I'm going to be using liquid. So I'm just dipping in my liquid and if you don't have liquid that's fine. You could use turpentine if you want to thin this out a little bit. And you, you don't want to cover your brush all the way to this point right here. You don't want oil paint to get in there. So just try to keep it like a little space in between. And for a background, you do want a little more paint on your brush, but controlling the amount of paint on your brushes is, is pretty important. So now we're just going to block in this background with this nice gray. And I can see already that I probably need to use a little liquid to get this to go a little bit further. Think about your brush strokes. If you want to use 
long and short brush strokes. If you like it to look a little bit more smooth and consistent, or if you like the sporadic um, kind of painting. And this is probably way too dark, but that's okay. Okay, so I just got a little bit more liquid because I need my paint to go a little further than it is, but I don't want to use more um, paint. So I'm just using my liquid. You can see this side doesn't have as much liquid, this one does, and you can see the brush strokes a lot more in this side. I'm disappointed in this brush. The bristles are coming out. Look at that. Okay. That's something that expensive brushes will not do that. <laughs> These are not expensive brushes. If you don't want to see your brush strokes as much, then you should use more paint, less liquid. If you want it all to be super duper, not duper, <laughs> if you want it to be very consistent, um, then mix up a, pot, a puddle of paint on your palette that's big enough that you can cover that area. So again, we're just blocking it in. Don't take a ton of time with this background. I think I've probably spent a little too much time. We just want, and you also, I think it's good to avoid like, see how I'm kind of outlining the shape like that? That will look a little weird in the end. Because we don't want the background to go around. We want it to look like it's going behind that object. And if you outline your objects, it'll just start to look a little strange. Like maybe this background is kind of floating forward or something. But we want it to be behind it. This is the easy part, right? Also with watercolor, we paint light to dark. And I've heard impressionists painted light to dark, but I the nice and wonderful thing about oils is you could paint light to dark or you could paint dark to light. Dark is just an easier value, I guess, to figure out maybe for some people than the light values. It's a little bit easier to find, especially in color. Okay, we're gonna drop that down. This is where you can kind of fix some of your mistakes. And I'm bringing this in a little close to these objects here. Okay, and let's go ahead and just paint this bottom area in as well. So we're gonna use the same pile, but we're gonna add more white. Here's a quick tip too. You wanna buy a ton of white. It's a color that gets used a lot. And black, I would buy like a big white and a big black. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the same Oh, actually, in the image it's darker, so let's add, let's keep it dark. Instead of adding white, let's add black to it. I like the lighter um, wall, so. So I'm just squeezing some black paint on back onto my palette. So I just got a bunch right here. And I have a habit of mixing it with my brush, but I'm gonna mix it with my palette knife. I don't want it to be black, so I'm gonna make sure to get some white in there. And you don't need to mix it in such a huge, like, get it everywhere. <laughs> I'll start mixing in different places so you can see a little bit better. Okay. Okay, and now we're just gonna block in this table. We can kind of refine some of these shapes in here. And we will be painting a monochromatic flower so you can kind of see um, the difference in painting something or more organic and painting something geometric. Also, one thing I love with oils is how soft you can get these edges. 
because really your edges are such a huge part of your painting. If you have soft edges or hard edges, hard edges are like what's in focus. And then hard edges are like what's kind of in the background. So now let's go ahead and let's block in some of the shadows on our shapes. So you can do this in two ways. You can start with like the medium tones and then work um, towards the highlights and the shadows. And since we kind of have a, a gray mixed up right now, I think that's a smart decision. So in this puddle right here, I'm just gonna add some white to it and some liquid. Also, liquid helps it dry faster. And since I'm kind of painting this all at once, I just wanna keep it. That's still pretty dark, so. So we just want it to be like a medium tone. So then look at your objects. Try to find those medium tones in here. This, the contrast is pretty intense, but I might even add some medium tones um, like at the top of this. Do you see how there's like, it's darker up here? Like here's a highlight for sure. And then this area right here is dark. So then you just grab, uh, let's see, color. I'm just gonna lay it in right there. And this is darker than it probably needs to be, but. This is the nice thing with using a square brush is it has, it already has a really flat edge. Also, we want a harder edge on the bottom of that. There's a shadow behind this ball on this block. And there's definitely a gray area on this cylinder right here. Comes back to the back and then continues up. Look at this shape, we'll just add this whole shadow here. Probably need to darken it up in a second. And then on the ball, definitely down in here. And then if you look at the top of this, this corner right here has got a little bit of shading because it's definitely dark, dark when you compare it. And then we are getting some shadows on the front of this cylinder right here. It's probably even a lot darker than this. Okay, now that we've added those shadow areas, I'm going to rinse my brush out. My turpentine's right here. And blot it off of my rag to try to get some of that color off of it. Because now I want to put in these lighter areas. So, oh sorry, I just hit the camera. So I'm just going to dip in the white. I'm mixing it right next to that color I had. So it's just like a lighter gray. And I'm gonna come over some of these areas like in here to kind of like redefine that shape. And then in here, this got way too dark. So I'm just kind of coming over the top. And right here, if it starts to just turn that color, I just need to add a little bit more of the light to it and up in here as well. And the nice thing with oils, like with acrylics, it just takes forever to get these kinds of blends. But with oils, they stay wet for so long that it's just, it's so easy to get these really nice colors. There is a highlight right here on this block that I'm just gonna put in. It must be reflected off of one of these. Maybe it's this one. Okay, and then we're just gonna come back in here. I'm gonna add a little bit more white because this is a highlight, but it's not Dark, as dark as this, not by any means. Value is a really important thing to understand, especially when you start to paint with color. Because once you start painting with color, if your values are off, it's just gonna, it's gonna look strange. And to try to figure it out, it's really good to be able to see things with more of a grayscale. There's a highlight right here. And I don't, there's maybe a tiny little highlight on the edge of this block. Okay, this is just like completely white. So now what we're going to do is I'm just gonna get the lighter areas and put those in and rinse off your brush because it's super hard to just grab. It's hard to get just white when you have, as like look, my brush still has gray on it after rinsing it off, so 
The thing, I really like using this coil, this jar. It just cleans your brushes off better than if it was in like a, just a glass jar with some turpentine. Okay, now let's grab some white. And since it's solid white, I'm gonna grab some liquid too. I don't know what, there's something in there. I don't know what it is. Okay, so I just have white on my brush, but there's a tiny bit maybe of gray still, but that's okay. So I wanna just get the top of this one first. We need to reshape some of these things. This is sometimes the hard part with oils is to get a hard edge when it's wet can be a little bit difficult. See, and this now has turned the same color, so I need more white. Sometimes you might have to just add some more white to your palette, and that's okay. So I'm rinsing off my brush. I'm really trying to get that gray off of it because it just keeps getting into my white. You could also use another brush. Just grabbing some more white paint. Even my, my oil paint seems to have some black on the top. Okay, so I have some more white. It's nice and pure. I'm trying not to get it near the gray. Because this is just a super white area of this shape. I don't want any gray in it. See, even if you accidentally touch this background, white is definitely something to do last though. Not first. <laughs> it's usually the, f like, it's like a fat layer, I guess. Okay, so I didn't keep that very straight. But we can straighten that back up with the background, it's okay. And then we're gonna bring that same value up onto the top. until we can get our bright white again. I have to re remix it, <laughs> that's okay. We'll just get the top of this box in. The nice thing with oils though is look how smooth. Sometimes that's the problem with oils is they're so smooth that things can look fake if you over smooth everything out because objects, unless it's like hyper real, there might be some objects, but usually they're not so smooth. but we do want to cover up these. The reason I use liquid also when I outline this is to hopefully so it would dry a little bit faster. So I could go over it and not have it kind of bleed into those other colors. Okay, now, what, one thing I want you to look at here, once we're kind of to this point, is what is separating these two areas. It looks a little gloppy. This is darker than this. And so that's what we need to do in our painting, is achieve that. So we need to lighten this up or darken that up. But we need to do something to separate them. Because right now they look like they're the same, but they shouldn't. This should be a lot lighter than that area. And we'll cover this with a darker paint. Let's just cover up some of these lines in here. And some of these lines. I mean, there's, there's gonna be black here, but not like as thick as we painted it before. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just working on where these pieces are coming together. Also, we don't want a white area right there showing up through the background. Okay, so let's work on oh, the bottom of this one. Got a little bit muddy. Okay, let's work a little bit on this ball.
The shadow's definitely more on this side, the right side. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white in here. The thing with oil paints and your brush too is if you try to add a light area over a dark area and you press hard with your brush, you can sometimes take off the paint underneath and it, or mix it in, right? You can mix it in with the color that you're trying to layer over the top. And typically when I layer over the top, I want this to be a fat <laughs> color. I don't want this watered down because I'm not trying to glaze. And then I'm going to add more lights in there. So I'm just picking up some white directly onto my brush. And I've got some lines that aren't very straight, so I'm just going to try to keep my arm as stiff as possible so I can get that, that line in there. I don't want a gray stripe, so. Okay, and then also we want to bring some more whites on each of these objects, because this is pretty, I would say this is like a low key painting. There's not very much light in it at all. I just want to make sure we get rid of this black. It's bugging me. Get rid of this black. Okay, so I'm gonna keep adding white to each of these objects. So I added some to this. We definitely need some on this object right here, this cube. That's another nice thing about using um, geometric objects. Is it's easy for us to paint them together. We're pretty familiar with these shapes. We just see them every day. And then I want to put the lights back on this one. Again, I like to avoid making it too smooth or else it just starts to look um, artificial and fake. So the left of this cylinder is very, very white. So I'm just going to start at the top. I need to get it a little bit further over. And that's a pretty hard line, but I want it to stand out from the background so it's okay. We definitely want this. We don't want these to blend in together. There's definitely a separation between these two shapes. Now I'm gonna put in some of these darker areas and we already have some dark colors mixed up, but really it's not black, but pretty close. <laughs> it's really, really dark. We also don't want it to mix in with our background. So if you look at it, this side's lighter than the background, but this side is definitely darker. So we want it to be darker. We need more black. So this is pretty black, pretty dark. And then the hardest part for me is just keeping my arm from wobbling. What will help that is if you just can keep your arm pretty stiff. So I'm just like barely blending it on the side. I'm not moving it over very much, but I do want to get that black out. Grab some more paint, oh, dark paint. 
Because just like the light will mix with the dark, the dark will start to mix with the light, and this needs to be dark right here. Definitely darker than the background. It's not significant enough, so. And I probably made that a little bit. One thing to keep in mind, like with this curve right here, we just want to keep it consistent. Not like bleh. <laughs> okay, now when we look at this, this is darker than this. So we're just going to keep that dark, but we need to adjust this edge right here. Because number one, there's a bit of white in there and that just really is throwing everything off. So let's try to get a straight line coming down there, separating. And if I blur my eyes, this, this probably appears darker because it's surrounded by light areas. Okay, now just keep looking at it and figuring out what areas need to be adjusted. Like, we don't want any of this white area in here. You can. I mean, really, you can do whatever you want. But if we want it to look like this picture, and I totally... Just got some dark in this light area where I didn't really want it. And just kind of rub it out. And this shadow comes a little bit more forward on there. Let's grab a lighter color and just adjust some of these areas that... I'm just going to get this lighter gray to kind of come in here. Like if we look at these two in here, it's lighter behind this. And also the shadow needs to come up higher on that object. So we'll add the light part here. And then we need to add that shadow coming up just a little bit higher than it is. So it comes up almost all the way to the top. But then this still is too dark. So we'll add some white in there. To add white, you really, you need to get that black off of your brush, so really try to get it off. Use your rag. And then the, the fun part where we just kind of get to adjust it and um, refine some of these shapes. So I'm just grabbing white. Just straight white. So you notice in the beginning I'm using a lot of liquid or not really a lot of liquid, but turpentine. And now I want it to be um, just this pure paint so I can get these highlights in here that I'm missing. So just go ahead and grab that white, that pure solid white Right here, we still need to separate. This should be way darker than the top of this cube. Okay, so now that I have most of the values on these, now what I'm looking at are edges. So you can refine some of the edges, you can straighten them up. Usually what happens is I just I can overwork it at this point, so what actually, the best tip actually to do right now is to walk away from this and then come back. Actually walk away, look at it. So I'm gonna stand up in my chair, walk back, look at it, and kind of figure out, okay, what are some changes that need to happen? Like why do some of my shapes not look straight or geometric, why do they look a little bit, like why does this not look really round and why does the bottom of my cube right here look like it has like a round bottom when it is pointy, you know? And I've kind of lost the angle of it as well. So straighten up your lines. 
add highlights, make sure your values are different. Like this still looks to me to be too, um, these are way too similar. Try to get a lighter value above it. And then also, you can't really see shadows on this table because it's so dark. I wish you could. One thing also to check to see if your painting is actually working or not is to try to figure out where the light is coming from. And is it consistent? Also, your edges, do you want these to be soft or hard? We have some hard edges in here, like that's a super hard edge but this is a little bit softer. This is like blending into the object above it. So that's, that's bad. You wanna fix that. If it looks like that. Yours probably looks a lot better than mine. So just kind of look at yours and figure out those areas that you might need to refine a little bit, separate a little bit. The nice thing with a square brush a flat brush is that it's pretty easy to um, get these lines in. And then if we've kind of lost this little dip right here, also I feel like kind of lost the whole edge of that there. So look, can you tell where the light's coming from? That's gonna be key. Also, can you see different values? Like these still, this looks like this and this should be lighter than that. Um, also, this area should be darker still. Like look at the contrast in this. We just are missing it here. I feel like the background's probably too light. Oh, I just like got oil paints all over my pants. Um, so I might play around with the background a little bit too and lighten it up, you don't have to, but I feel like it just needs to happen in this to make this work a little bit better. I'm just gonna try it. If it doesn't work, then I will just uh, edit this later and <laughs> not show you it. But I feel like this background is just too dark. So I'm just adding a little bit of a lighter gray there. Just barely, you can probably, you might not even be able to tell. And I am using a little bit of liquid. So I'm just quickly lightening it up. Lighting it up, lightening it up. That doesn't sound right. Okay. You can also straighten up some of your shapes. Um, you can even just lighten up the, like some areas of the background. As if you look, it's, it's darker along the bottom by the table. Well, that's bad, I painted over that. But it's too light, so. Again, we don't want our background to feel like it's not attached, so be careful. Also, be careful, you don't want to mix. Oh, see, there's a, a bristle. You do not want that in there, okay. Okay, now once I've lightened that up just a little bit, and I don't want like, I don't want a lot going on in my background. I don't want it to be the focus, so I'm just, Sometimes, depending on where the light is, it's kind of hard to tell. 
where you need to adjust. So it's pretty simple. Uh, it's not <laughs> as refined as I would like it. I still think there's some areas to lighten up and darken, but hopefully you got the idea of how to create this value drawing. Um, but if you want to, some people recommend when you start painting, maybe to paint a little bit more indirectly where you paint a layer and you let it dry and then you paint another layer and you let it dry. So that's also an option. If, if this was hard because it got so muddy, then it wasn't your fault. It was my fault for teaching you this first. <laughs> But you will get it. It's like any, it's like anything, like playing a guitar. There's just a few things you need to learn and practice, and then you can do it on your own, and it, you'll be surprised, like how, um, not how easy it is, but maybe, I don't know. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is, you know, fix any parts you feel like need to be adjusted. Let me zoom in here so you can kind of see it a little bit better. Sometimes you need to move around too with oil paint because it shines, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Okay, so you're finished. I hope you enjoyed painting with me. Rinse your paints out in the turpentine, then I actually like to wash mine in a little bit of soap too, just to keep it um, clean. Let's just... Also, one thing I forgot to mention, and I need to probably add this to the beginning, is that you need to make sure you have some windows open because you need ventilation. But thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This was kind of a long one, but oil painting, it's gonna be longer than any of my other tutorials. Um, but I'll try to just show you some steps in the beginning and you could hopefully just start to do it on your own. But just remember, like you can just keep refining your shapes, um, adding layers. What you wanna do now is make sure you put this somewhere where it can dry and not get disturbed by anything or anyone because that is a big problem with oil paint. Thanks for sticking through this with me, and I would love to see images of your work on Instagram or wherever you're posting things. Use hashtag Mr. Otter Studio or hashtag Mr. Otter Art Studio, and maybe you could even do hashtag Mr. Otter Studio Oil, because this is a new thing. A lot of people come to my channel for, um, for watercolor and other techniques, but I just wanted to finish a little oil course just to show you some of the techniques and um, ways to use it. So thank you so much for sticking with me today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next week.